At IGAS it's very important that we actually select a site where we minimise the impact on the environment and the local community. We have to consider numerous aspects, including the geology of course, but also the surface constraints, so things like woodlands, proximity to local houses, aquifers in the area, um, and they, they all go towards helping us identify where we can and cannot locate a site. Here in the UK, onshore, we have actually been producing, exploring for oil and gas for many, many years actually, and that's been done in, in sensitive areas without issue. Environmental monitoring is one of the key activities that we undertake, not just at the beginning of our operations, but also during our operations and after. And it often starts as a requirement of the planning, so we will undertake various studies for the site specifically. But then as we develop, we also install things like monitoring boreholes. And these are to so we can take data before we start even site construction to show what the baseline of the area is. And then we monitor that on a regular basis to make sure that our operations aren't actually ad adversely affecting the local environment. In the UK, we've probably got one of the most stringent regulatory regimes in the world. We are regulated by a number of authorities, not just one. So one of the things that, that is worthwhile pointing out is that we can't start our operations, actually start drilling the well, until all our permits and consents are in place. So we have the licence from the Oil and Gas Authority, DEC, their consent to undertake the operations. We have the planning permission from the Mineral Planning Authority. We have the environmental permit from the Environment Agency and that the actual programme of how we will drill the well has been independently reviewed by our independent well examiner and also that the Health and Safety Executive have also reviewed that programme. Then and only then will we start to drill. The site is sealed with an impermeable membrane to prevent any surface fluids entering the ground. The first step is to drill a vertical well. The drill bit penetrates the various rock formations and is then brought back up and steel casing inserted. Cement is pumped and rises up alongside the outside walls of the casing. This is repeated several times to protect groundwater, ensure the integrity of the system and seal the well. The borehole can be drilled as deep as 3,000 meters below the surface, vertically. Eventually, the drill will gradually turn and horizontal drilling will begin. This is also encased in steel and cemented. During the fracking process, a mixture of water, sand and a small percentage of disclosed and approved chemicals are pumped down the well to create a network of tiny cracks just a few millimetres wide. The sand granules keep the fractures open to release the gas. The chemicals are used to prevent corrosion and carry the sand into the cracks. The amount of water used will vary from well to well, but could be in the range of 4,000 to 20,000 cubic metres of water. 5,000 cubic metres is equivalent to the volume of two Olympic swimming pools. The fracking process itself can take approximately two to four weeks per well. Then the well begins production. Any water produced during the process is captured and treated under strict regulation in accordance with environmental permits. During production, the wellheads, similar to those you can see here, and the associated production equipment are the only things visible on the surface. There may be between four to ten wells on each pad. The lifetime of a production site could be as long as 25 years. However, the drilling rig would only be on site for approximately two of those years in total. Once a site comes to the end of its life, we go through a process which is known as site clearance and site restoration. Uh, there's, there's two aspects to that. It's a requirement of the planning application that we actually return the site back to its original state. Uh, and there's also the requirements under the Environment Agency's permit uh, that requires us to demonstrate that we have caused no adverse impact to the environment through the life cycle of the site. Once the agency is happy with that, the permit's relinquished and the site is fully re returned back to the landowner. Mm -hmm.